I'm not a superhero. That is for billionaires and narcissists and adult orphans for some reason. Okay, Tatiana, I have to say it. I'm so glad to see you in this. Congratulations on the series. Thank you. But I've seen you do genre, Orphan Black, you had to do everything. Comedy though, like mm. I'm glad you're doing it, mm -hmm. but it's a really big leap. What made you want to really sort of dive into that? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've always been a fan of comedy. It's like my favorite thing to watch and, and I revere comedians. So when this script came to me, I, I was laughing on every page. I found it so funny and I thought it was so character specific, you know? It wasn't just like a comedy that was jokes. It was like these weird characters kind of bouncing against each other. So it felt uh, like a good good in for me into into that world. It seems like the mockumentary style has definitely come up a bit. So audiences mm -hmm. are a, li a little bit more used to that sort of office. We're going to turn away to the camera. But mm -hmm. this show with this breaking of the fourth wall, that is a complete, I think, departure from that. Yeah. Um, but is that like something like as an actor you like relish in addition to the fact of like, you know, getting to like kick butt and show up Mark Ruffalo and all those other things? <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, the, the address to camera is like, this wonderful um, expression of the fact that She-Hulk is so conscious. She's so aware of the the structure within she which she's operating. Um, you know, she knows there's an audience and she's kind of looking back at them. So much of this show is about outward perception, mm -hmm. depending on the body that you present, how you're treated, how you're spoken to. So for her to look back at the people who are looking at her feels yeah. feels like an engagement with that exact you know idea that we're talking about. There's so much of that. I mean, we're inside a woman's head, which is like such should not seem like a novel thing, but right. like not something that we live in that much in like I think modern television. So it's so great this is on a streaming service. And I haven't even talked about the big thing. Girl, you're a superhero. Like you literally <laughs> legit like have like like toys and stores. Oh, like yeah, you can yeah. play with yourself. It is like all there. <laughs> I you can know? play with myself. <laughs> But that's like a such a like it's yeah. a badass thing, right? And she's yeah. the ultimate badass. So was it that that made you want to do it? Was it Kevin Feige sort of like knocking on your door, sliding through DMs? I know he does that. I know oh, really. He, apparently he does, or no. at least like peep Twitter. Yeah, yeah. No, I like truly auditioned for this. Like wow. I, I, yeah, and and that's. I, I love auditioning in the, in the sense of I love um, girl you are a rare breed. <laughs> well, I mean it in the sense of when it when it's when it is when you do have an opportunity to audition with people who are actually watching, that's a totally different thing because yeah. our industry has gone in a fully different direction where truly all of my friends send tapes, they go into an ether and they never get feedback and da da da. So the luxury of having mm. the director there and all of the execs as much as it's terrifying it's like that's that's the job that's yeah. what we why we do this so yeah wow you guys went through the, this is an old school sitcom i love that about it yeah. i really love that it not only like plays within the wheelhouse of sitcoms but honors it doesn't mm -hmm. make fun of it but really is like no this is a really interesting and one of that is like the callbacks and oh, yeah. this sort of like, there's some real things that are like very specific to sitcoms. What was your favorite sort of like, I wouldn't say trope, but but part of that genre that you got to play in that you particularly liked? Oh, that's a cool idea. Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, because you guys have a bunch, you guys have post credit scenes, you have sort of like catchphrases, you have yeah, yeah, yeah. callbacks, uh, mysterious <laughs> characters that pop up and you don't see them for forever and then they just pop up again. Yes. You guys have all of that. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think, yeah, and tonally it kind of, even if we're like in the courtroom, it always keeps like dragging itself back into like sitcom territory. I don't know. I, I like love Elaine Bennis from Seinfeld. So for me, she was like a big touchstone for this character oh, wow. in the sense of like, she's like in the corporate world, but she's also like, stealing cake from her boss's fridge. Like there's like this great combo yeah. of like super professional and absolute disaster <laughs> that I think is, you know, there's a beautiful a, an disaster. Element. She's a beautiful, as long as she's beautiful. I mean, but no, but like, <laughs> but like when I say that is like, you really enjoy this mess. Like yeah, you yeah, enjoy totally. watching this woman fall apart of For it. Sure. Oh, that is such a great way to put it. Yeah, like, yeah. no, legitimately, I yeah. like it. Like somebody you enjoy watching fall down. Totally. I, I love that so He's much. He's like superhuman. <laughs> super. super 
super space human, not <sighs> superhuman. But there you go. That's the little. Thing. And again, again, superhuman because you're giving me a great segue. Thank you for helping me no do problem. my job. No problem. I saw your notes before. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I know exactly where you go. But yeah, no, that's the super, the human aspect of it, but also like the mocap aspect of it and what you physically. <laughs> have to shift on set. I'm sure you've gotten that experience from Orphan Black, literally duplicating yourself, but what was it like with this one, sort of, you know, your head is taller and they're yeah. acting to a different plane. Yeah, it's it's a totally different thing and, and it requires a different, um, uh, like, internalizing of of who I, who I look like um, while still maintaining Jennifer. Because yeah. Jennifer is the same when she becomes She-Hulk, she's just in a completely different, body yeah. and so it's really about how other people respond to her and you know I'm walking on these like platforms I'm taking up all this space in a room that I'm doing a scene in so I already feel like 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 I'm taking up a you know I'm yeah. taking up a space yeah and to me all of that really informs how she hulk feels when she walks into a room that's so cool I yeah, would love fun. to just have your job for one day and just be a woman that could be like part the sea oh yeah <laughs> that's that's enviable yeah. Mark Ruffalo we definitely have to talk about him yeah. I don't think it would be like advice but I think it's more of like what did he tell you about sort of coming into this because I know you guys shot your stuff with him yes yeah. early I believe yeah he was just I mean he's so much about like empowering other people people's processes like he would never you know tell me how to be a Hulk or anything but we did swap stories and ideas around it and sort of our own experiences um, and I think we do come to it from a different perspective which is very helpful in the <laughs> sense that so do Bruce and Jen yeah but we also have like I, I have such a deep respect for him and such a, a love for him and we we both like to play yeah so so we get that like kind of crackly you know brother sister banter thing that happens um, while also like getting to be in mocap suits. So it's, it's, it was really fun. It was special. And let's honestly keep it real. The fact that like she Hulk is better at being a Hulk because basically the Hulk didn't go to therapy uh -huh. and didn't learn how to regulate emotions is yeah. like testament to just how brilliant the show is written. Yeah, totally. Jessica Gao is well, a genius. People only care because I'm representing Emil Bonsky. I think they care because they're like, Hey, that girl's green. Jen, do your thing. God, I really like this outfit. I'm not proud of this. First of all, I do have to say your character is hilarious. Thank and you. And it's like, I, I don't want to say it because it's diminishing, but like the best friend is a role, right? Yes. And so like it is a type of role to have, but if you're going to do it, do it like that, right? <laughs> Thank you. But did you sort of like approach it that way? Because this show definitely has those like sitcom vibes, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know, yeah, that role can be so archetypal and it's like there's so many dangers that come along with it. Oh my goodness. Facts. <laughs> Trust. <laughs> like, so I was like, no, 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 no. She's going to be right rad, you know? And so I got really involved in with her clothes and with, uh, you know, even with her hair and makeup and, and I wanted her style a specific way. And I just, I wanted her to be really free. And if I, and I, I, you know, I love people like Bill Murray. I love a lot of, I love a lot of like these characters that I've seen before that are often played by men and they get to go off and kind of say whatever they want, which is always fun to play. So I really wanted her to be that non-consequential, unapologetically herself person that, um, that is still really, really based in love, you know? And, uh, yeah. And authentic so. still. Very yes, yes. real. Like, yeah. not a character. Like, I mean, obviously yeah. you're playing a character, but she's not a caricature. Yes, 100%. Of yeah. what that could be. Yeah. Although I will say, in the MCU, they do have a pretty good track record for best friends. Like, they, they really do. do. I like, love you got Ned from Spidey. Oh, my yeah. God. I, Ned, I was I was literally going to go, like, Korg. But then there's yeah. also, um, you're also talking about, like, Bucky and yes. Falcon. Oh, yeah. And, like, that's two. Yeah, they are. Like, Bucky, gosh, that's such a dynamic. <laughs> part right it, yeah so of all of the MCU best friends yeah. would you have one that you would want to like bring into She-Hulk universe I mean even Wong like Wong is oh, in the best God. friend I know too Wong so you've already gotten so one we already got blessed with Wong trust me <laughs> I would probably choose though if, if there was another I'd choose Ned because you know he's also Filipino and, and they finally put Alola in Spider-Man and it was oh, just I the know. cutest thing ever and I would want to see his family <sighs> yeah we, so probably, we might be related I mean what if I'm related to Ned are you writing this right now? Are yeah. we, like, because if we could make this happen, like, we can make this happen. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to talk about you're bringing a lot to this. Like, <laughs> like this is like a continuation of the show because you bring like Jen through a lot. Like, yeah. Jen, like she needs. <laughs> 
She really <laughs> Nikki she needs, does need needs Jennifer you. a lot in <laughs> so many things. What are you most excited about taking her through on this journey? Because you are her best friend, but you are also like I think her driving force. Well, I love to see her win. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to fail at this. I don't want to be like, hey, do all these risky things and really embrace who you are and not have it pay off. You know what I mean? So I, it's it's a gamble, but I'm I'm hope it's all well intended. But I I like to see her freaking win. You know? I mean, and you definitely push her towards that. And I would say win in more ways than one. Like Thank that's you. all I will say. <laughs> Any way that you right? can win, See, right? Nikki is gonna Listen, push. I'm covering all the bases, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Full circle friend. Um, and I will say that is part of who she is. Like you said, she's very free. She's somebody that believes in love yeah. and like legit and shares that with the world, right? <laughs> but in that, I would say like that freestyle, what would you say is her philosophy? Because I think it comes through in who she is, mm -hmm. but it's something that's hard to quantify, but you brought it so like, I think uh, refreshingly on screen to where I could feel it. So how did you sort of describe her? What would you say is her? Yeah, I, I felt like Nikki was very, um, I felt like Jen was book smart and Nikki was street smart in a way that she understood people's psychology. Mm. And I feel like she's probably been through a bunch of things. She's accepted how difficult it is to be a woman in the world. And she's like, no, this is how I live my life and this is what I'm doing. But I, I do feel like she's, She's uh she's uniquely in tune with with people's psychology whether she really is acutely aware of it yeah and so there's kind of this driving force and that's why she can kind of work with anyone and 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 is confident that she can kind of talk her way out of things and know how to talk to people yeah oh I really like that also like you get to witness probably more than anyone in the show just how good of an attorney that she is yes. and just really how she advocates for someone do you think there's anybody accused of a crime or really any MCU villain that she couldn't defend absolutely not she Hulk and GLKNH our entire <laughs> squad can help anyone human or superhuman but who would be difficult I think the most difficult people would be some, some characters you will see on our show that have yet to enter the MCU Ooh. until our show because we are a superhuman law division so we can pluck any superhuman out of the comic books and throw them into our show and some of them are freaking weird and difficult. So You have really just intrigued me so much because I do not think those are in the oh, episodes that I got to see. No, and I don't they're think not. That, and I, don't I, think that's... I can't wait for you to see these actors that embody these brand new roles that haven't been in uh, the Marvel, the MCU yet. So get ready. Okay, now I'm shook. <laughs> Thank you for shocking me. Thank you so much for shocking me. You already mentioned him once, but I definitely want to talk to the Benedict Wong of it all and just his energy on set and what he brings to everything. Like, who even is this man? I love him so much. Like, what a light in the world. Yeah. Truly. Like, he's he, everyone in his circle is so lucky. He... He came, you know, Jessica writes these roles for these actors that are iconic and we don't know if they want to be on our show. You know what I mean? We're like, oh my God, I can't believe they're here. And then they're there and they're happy to be there and and giving so much. And and Benny would bring, like, all of, I have a video, one day he just started DJing on set and if and I'm like, oh, that means he brought a setup <laughs> from London. From the, he travels with these things. Wow. And so he would be DJing in his Wong outfit, which is just Girl, please so, tell me there's video you're about oh, to drop. I, I'll just say that I released it and then I got in trouble for releasing it. But then Benny was like, where'd the video go? And I was like, I think it's still out there because you can't stop the music. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I did get in trouble for it. But it does exist. We would dance to. Uh, oh, I mean, th you know that now I'm like, it's now I'm listen, gonna have to find the Marvel it. fans. They're gonna screen grab whatever they find. So <laughs> I, I am. Uh, I apologize. I didn't know I wasn't allowed to. Hey, we gonna be all right. Yeah, we gonna be all right. This is what you're still here. We're still yeah. happy. We're gonna keep it kicking. Yeah. I do have to ask this one thing, like sort of like leaving in this. Obviously, you are hilarious. Oh, you thanks. cracked me up so much oh, just you. in this time here. How much did you guys get to play with that on set and improv? Because you can really tell that you guys were probably having just a blast. Yeah, we were really lucky. And there's so many improvisers, you know, and Tatiana knows how to improvise, Josh Segura, John Bass, like Renee Lee Schools, very one of the funniest people I've met in my life. Like, so weirdly, um, even though there's all the technical elements to it, I think because improv is inherently mostly verbal, it's still, there's still, it's still possible. It doesn't conflict yeah. with uh, the technical of it all. So uh, Jessica, like, let us play around and uh, put our stank on things and, and, and through, and we would do something and then she'd throw us another suggestion. So we just, yeah, we got really lucky on this comedy. So I'm clearly nailing it at all these things. If you want to go back to life as a lawyer, I, I respect that. He doesn't mean that.
first of all, Jessica, congratulations on the series. I have to start this way because I feel like this is really the first time that we're going to see a bona fide sitcom and a bona fide comedy in the MCU. And it is a sort of like brave choice to also be one of the ones that actually acknowledges the audience outside of, I would say, the Deadpool series. So what was that decision like and why lean into it? Because it could have easily been left out as something that's difficult, you know, especially in series. There's no way I would have left it. <laughs> um, because, you know, the John Byrne run was my favorite run. It was what made me fall in love with this character. And to me, that is the iconic run. And, yeah. um, and so to me, breaking the fourth wall is quintessential She-Hulk. Like that is such an inextric inextricably linked part of her character that there's no way I would have made a show about her without that. It, then it wouldn't, to me, it wouldn't feel like She-Hulk. Yeah. And I completely, like, basically I was, like, giving you the license to be like, no way. Because there's different <laughs> versions of the yeah. character and, and she didn't always do this. This yeah. was very, to that particular point, to that mm -hmm. particular run. Yeah. And it also teams up to this other nice thing about it that it sort of sets up maybe the idea for, I would say, more universes within there. Maybe West Coast Avengers is that one that, I mean, I know you yeah. really couldn't say. Yes, but I can't. <laughs> I know you couldn't say, but is that something maybe you also were passionately interested about? <laughs> And uh, studied a little bit. I mean, there are so many things I was passionately interested about. <laughs> <laughs> do you like my very well rehearsed Marvel answer? I my really, Marvel safe answer? I really do love and appreciate how much they threaten y'all. But <laughs> 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 one thing that's going to come out with this series when folks sort of watch it is the fact that in addition to that, you lean into one of Marvel's big staples, which is the post credit scene, um, really heavily with this one. And they are so pitch perfect and they really go to incredible places. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. How much of that was planned out for each episode? Like how far in advance? Because really, I would say there's like key post credit scenes that everybody loves. And you guys really tried to hit it out of the park with each one of these like that. Um, I love post credit scenes, like not just in Marvel, like any movie that has a post credit scene. I love it's always, you know, it just feels like an extra little treat you get at the end. Um, and, you know, our writers room, you know, we're all comedy writers, so like, give us any chance to throw in another joke and we'll take it, of course. <laughs> like, we're we're never going to stop. So um, almost every episode has a uh, post credit scene. And those are always some of the most fun things to come up with. I will say, too, mm -hmm. they all sort of have, like, a very unique identity. How far in advance were they planned? Or did you sort of approach each one on the filming schedule? Like, how did each one sort of get set up? Or did they come yeah. organically? Uh, most of them were scripted. Um, there was only one that was written on the fly, and that was based on casting of um, who was in it. Okay. I, you know exactly what I'm talking I, I'm about. Like, I'm yep. like, I think I understand. And folks, y'all yes. are in for a treat. I will just say, <laughs> like, if they don't, if they can't tell already, you're in for a treat. The other thing I think folks are going to be surprised about is how much you guys really leaned into the case of the week of it. And just that idea of like, you know, I think a lot of folks had said maybe Deadpool or whatever, but I just thought Ally McBeal in mm -hmm. so many ways, just the, these different cases. And they felt real, even though they were heightened. So what was the sort of process for picking each one of these cases and where you guys went each, each time? It was really fun. I mean, we had such a great writing staff and we had so much fun every single day because really we spent so many weeks just mining all the movies and um, all the comics and picking characters out of there that, you know, we, you know, somebody would be like, well, I really think that they might be fun. And then we had the kind of thought exercise of um, figuring out like, what is a character specific reason why that person would be in legal trouble, mm. you know? And that's always a fun place to start. And it's this built in comedy engine for like, for funny stories. Very cool. Mm -hmm. I guess the next question would be, is there anything that you guys sort of workshopped um, that maybe even made it into a script, but didn't, that we didn't get to see that you're like, oh man, I wish we would have gotten that one. I mean, there's so many. I mean, give <laughs> I, us one maybe, like a little, <laughs> little, little BTS <laughs> Easter egg of one little one that we may have missed. I don't, I would have to think about it. I mean, it's just been so long, you know, and there's true. so many things. Yeah. I was going to say, this is like yeah. the thing with the Marvel. You guys kind of filmed these all yeah. sort of at once and then have sort of like expanded upon it. But yeah. I will say just of all the things that you've sort of seen in the MCU and maybe even She-Hulk do, is there anything that you think folks should most look forward to if they're familiar with it from either the run or anything else? Like maybe what should folks keep an eye out for? Well, you know, I'm just really excited to uh, 
show like all the different facets of superhero life. That really honestly is what I'm excited about. Like I'm excited that we actually have a, a hero, a Marvel hero who dates and like meets all these different um, characters and gets to experience like the full breadth of like a single woman's life. That's actually what I'm very excited about. The other thing I think mm -hmm. is interesting too is underneath mm -hmm. all of that, she's also dealing with a lot of the heightened idea of like, mm -hmm. I didn't sign up to be a superhero. Mm -hmm. And also I really just want to do this job and I'm passionate about these people. And this is all getting in the way of that. And then there's also some of this like very broad comedy and like all of it sort of mixes in together. How did you guys in the writer's room sort of balance that as mm -hmm. far as like keeping it? Because they take big shifts in tone, but it's like you feel like you can go along with the characters each time. Yeah. Um, we had a uh, very female heavy writer's room and, you know, like in any other uh, writer's room, we're mining each other's lives for ideas and for content, you know, and as everyone starts talking about their life experiences and like issues that were affecting them, um, you start seeing kind of like patterns and commonalities and kind of common themes of things that were like plaguing us in the moment or just in our lives in general. And so those were kind of the things that we would then put into uh, put into the show. And some of those issues kind of, you know, lend itself into being kind of like heavier, more emotional topics because it's just real. And then yeah. there are other times where, like all comedy writers, we deal with trauma by with by using humor, you know, yeah. and we're just masking our tears. <laughs> yeah, but you did it so well. And I appreciate <laughs> you guys using those tears as fuel for our entertainment. Let me just say that. Your transformations are triggered by anger and fear. Those are like the baseline of any woman just existing. Oh. Bruce, kind of feels like if I don't transform, I'm gonna die. Yes, yes, yes. No, no. First of all, congratulations on the series. I have to start here because it seems like this was obviously a project that anyone who knows Marvel IP would want to bring into something. But how did your journey sort of get involved in this and being an EP and directing most of the episodes? Um, I had been talking to Marvel for a little while about finding something to collaborate on together because I'm a huge MCU fan. Uh, and when She-Hulk came along, it was a no brainer and I put together um, my vision for the show, and it aligned directly with uh, the writers and, our, and the producers at Marvel, and um, it was off to the races. <laughs> One of the things the show really does, because although there's um, a definitive run um, and the pr premiere run of She-Hulk, I think everyone sort of has their different versions of her that they like. This one obviously leans into the one that breaks the fourth wall, but that's sort of like an interesting comedy trope that you don't get to explore too often. And so leaning into it heavily is like a very big swing. What was uh, what was that sort of like as far as directing that? And again, you just don't see very many actors come direct to camera like that. I mean. To me, that is one of the fundamentals of She-Hulk. She, along with superhuman strength, has a sense of self-awareness that I consider to be another superpower. And that self-awareness reflects in the fourth wall breaks and in the idea that, you know, maybe there's somebody else uh, moving those marionette strings. <laughs> um, and so that was always um, a part of the show. And it really became a question of how much, how much you know, helps draw the audience in, um, you know, while still maintaining the integrity of the world that we're building and not breaking out too many times. Absolutely. I mean, obviously folks can sort of make a draw and inspiration from the burn run, but also just within the DNA of the show, it obviously follows very strict comedy sitcom rules. And I would say also sort of encourages them with a lot of, I would say the sort of format of it and the things that you guys call back throughout the series. So what do you think about this particular show and the style was the biggest inspiration? Was it those rom-cons like Ally McBeal or was it more, I would say, maybe more fourth wall breaking type shows like that? Gosh, it's such a mishmash of a million different things. The essence of the character from the comics it was first and foremost. And then what I love about Ally McBeal or Legally Blonde is that they took a genre, the courtroom uh, drama, and they turned it on its head and they subverted it and they inserted pink and wildness and strangeness, which we obviously do. Yeah. You know, then there are these fourth wall breaks that are reminiscent of shows like Fleabag and Deadpool, but she's doing it way before that. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, my responsibility as a director was to honor the comedy, but also draw from the films and yeah. make sure this feels like it's part of the language of the MCU. That's the other thing about it, too, is because we've obviously seen like mockumentary style presentations where folks are talking to the camera, but it's sort of, again, like they know they're being filmed and it's the presence 
presence and the awareness, the isolation of her being the only person that is really sort of about that is, I think, very different. And it also sets up, you know, I would say more things for her to do within the MCU and potentially bringing in different characters that fill this out. So, I mean, I'm setting this up maybe or not, (laughs) but is there anybody else you'd like to see maybe come into this world? Maybe somebody who also breaks the fourth wall? I don't know. I'm not making any suggestions. Well, I mean, (laughs) uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds, if you're out there. (laughs) <laughs> um, you know, I look, I think part of the genius of the premise is that you're in the real world at a superhuman law firm and the real world happens to house every superhero that's ever existed. Yeah. So you could literally have every single one of them go through the doors of that of that um, law firm. I mean, this is the other thing, though, too. You also have already brought over some pretty cool folks from the law firm and Charlie Cox and Benedict Wong. I do have to say, adding in them, just the characters that you use, obviously Mark Ruffalo as well. I don't want to forget about our original Hulk, too. I would have been shot for that Tim one. Tim Roth. <laughs> Tim Roth, I know. But what was it about them that that they felt right for this particular story? Obviously, Mark has the general connection, but some of these other characters, it seems like you guys really wanted to create an ensemble. Absolutely. I mean, Mark is such an important part. This is a story of a woman, um, and a big part of her story is family, and he <laughs> is family, and they have this sibling-like big brother, little sister relationship. Um, And then Wong, I mean, I keep hearing people talk about the Wong CU, and we Mm -hmm. fully support that. He can be in everything always. (laughs) Um, And then, you know, Tim Roth is his character is directly tied to Hulk. He tried to kill him. I mean, absolutely. So it's all very organic. You know, there was no cameos for the sake of cameos. Absolutely. I will say that. And I will not say that that any of them need to be forced. But, you know, again, if some of those ones happen, I'm not going (laughs) to... Um, Since you got to direct a lot of them, you obviously were very intimately involved with the actors and the sort of overall arc of the show as executive producer as well. But which episode are you most excited to for an audience reaction? Because I know, I think the reaction to the show in general is going to be huge as far as folks, this is not going to be what they expect, but it's going to be really delicious to watch them come along with it. But which episode in particular are you looking forward to? I mean, obviously the opening and the dynamic between uh, He-Hulk and She-Hulk. I love episode four written by Melissa Hunter, the Mystic Castle. I love um, Donnie Blaze and Madison and Wong. Uh, You know, I think that should be a (laughs) spinoff. That should, you know, he's gonna get a spinoff. He kind of has to at this point. Otherwise it's like everyone else is gonna be like, quit, you're always here. (laughs) And Madison needs to be there calling him Wongers. Yes, that is actually Uh, true. um, You know, that tag was actually Added after watching their comedic chemistry um, on the day, just like really? put them on a couch and turn two cameras on them. It's where that uh, you know sitcom training came in handy because <sighs> when you see that kind of magic, you gotta get just it as go much as you it. can. I was also gonna say too, with just the idea of the post-credit scenes, for when you're directing those, do they have a different vibe from the rest of the episode? Because they do really, for the episodes that have it, really accentuate the series. Um, you know, they don't, but they tend to be lighthearted and not- have nothing to do with plot which Uh kind of frees you to find, you know, that looseness that you're always looking for when you're directing comedy. The other thing I was just going to say, too, because they've essentially set this up, and so I kind of have to ask it, is this idea of, like, you know, we're here in Los Angeles. She-Hulk is not. But there's just this idea of, like, some West Coast-type things that could happen. Like the West Coast Avengers, Kevin? (laughs) 